Boys in the Hood, baby boy. Just a couple of the movies John Singleton has done in his career. We recently sat down with him at the American Black Film Festival to talk about filmmaking. It's nice to just really, you know, see different, different visions of, of what African American filmmakers are wanting to do and aspiring to do, and also the talent. You know, there's a talent pool. The talent pool comes all the way over there. There's the people here that aren't necessarily going to go and move to LA to make it in the business. They come here for a few days, and we are supposed to like be of service to them to give them advice or whatever. So I don't mind, like, you know, I come down and I just hold court sometimes and just talk to scores of folks and everything, you know. Um, you know, that's what it's about. Also relationships in terms yes, of being exactly. able to, it's just, there's nothing like when you meet people and, and you're having just regular, ordinary conversation and you're yes. building a rapport. Exactly, exactly. I mean, and that's what, I mean, that's what um, any type of, I guess movement needs is, is, is support from, from, from different levels. You know, it's not a really about that whole thing of like, oh, I got my mind and I'm not trying to let nobody else in. We need as many people as possible to realize their dreams and tell their stories, you know, to really have it even more of a stronger hold on, on what this is. Because this media is so powerful, you know, film and television is so powerful. It has a, the ability to shape and form the way people think about themselves first of all, individually, and then collectively. So we need people who are coming into this with a certain kind of mindset of, of what they want to do, but they understand, you know, they can follow my example or someone else's example that they really admire and say, hey, you know, listen, this person is a person of integrity. They have a certain clear clarity of vision. And, you know, if I follow that, maybe I'll, I'll make it. John Maxwell um, has tons of leadership books. He uh, holds his conferences, and there are a lot of people who worked under him, mm -hmm. who he has said, "It's time for you to go," mm -hmm. and they've gone out, done their own thing, has given their blessings, mm -hmm. and they still are crediting him for that. Yes. When, when you look at your career, how does it make you feel when you're able to say uh, they got their first shot on one of my projects? I mean, and I don't they, even look at it like that. I just look at it. I don't even. I don't even go back to any of that stuff. It's just like. I, um, I was inspired by people, you know, I was inspired by, by several filmmakers, you know, Gordon Parks um, and then Spike Lee, who I met just when I was in high school going to college, you know, and I hope that I was able to service that for other people, for other filmmakers to do good work and stuff, you know what I mean? What I mean by that is the not, not being inspired, but giving somebody the shot. Yeah. A lot of people say, if, man, if I could just get a shot. Uh -huh. But being for you being in position to give somebody that shot, well, and then you that see too. them, <laughs> and then you see them years later. I love it. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it. You know, I love it. I mean, um, you know, well, my good friend Ice Cube. You know, he he started off with me as an actor, and then he became a, a writer producer. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Now, writer, producer, entrepreneur, entrepreneur yeah, on yeah. the whole company. Exactly. Thing. You know, I love it. I love it. Directing is one thing. Folks got to know you through directing Boys in the Hood. But one of the things that um, you I've noticed in what you've done is you said, okay, that's one piece. Mm -hmm. But the ability to be able either to be an executive producer or producer to be involved in other aspects of the business. Yes, exactly. Well, how critical is that? It's very critical. For, for me, you know, I write first and foremost because writing is the blueprint for everything i write direct and produce so um i just really think that if you really have if you really want to have an all-encompassing vision of what you want to do you have to really start at the root of story you know what i mean story and a story has to have a reason to be told you know um whether or not it's a personal issue or it's something that um, is affecting a lot of people, or whatever. It has to have uh, come from a, a genuine place of passion. And I always come from, that's all with me. It's all about a genuine place of passion. So what you working on now? Um, I have a new show out, um, coming out called Snowfall. Um, it's on FX Networks. It premieres July the 5th. And um, it's a story about how cocaine uh, changed uh, uh, America, but changed LA first and foremost. Frankie! Franklin Saint, king of all the white boys. I'm here to buy. I don't sell coke to kids. And what do you sell? It's a kilos to people with money. 50 kilos worth of cocaine hidden in a hot tub? I'm a soldier, not a drug dealer. So what are we talking about? How badly does the director want this war funded? 
Uh, is it uh, based on any real person or no, it's a, all fictional, a collection? It's all fictional. It's a personal story for me because I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, as everybody knows, and see my movies. Um, um, but this is about how the, how the, the proliferation facilitated by the CIA mm -hmm. of cheap cocaine went to Los Angeles. Thank you, Gary Webb, the late <laughs> Gary Webb. And, and how that started the crack epidemic. So, you know, this is before cocaine. The show starts before cocaine, and you, the snowfall is the storm, you know. Mm -hmm. it, there's a storm coming. I've been telling people there's a storm coming, and it's cocaine, you know. And with the, with the cheap cocaine, you know, they were able to, to basically, people were able to formulate and make, make crack. You know what I mean? They put it on us, but it, it, was, it was something that was, you know, it wasn't invented by us at all. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.